Hello and welcome to Mission Backlog. Sorry for the delay on this review, I got sidetracked by a game I said I would give a miss for a couple of years to focus on my backlog, though obviously I got pulled in again by the shiny cards and ever so slight improvements to gameplay and donated £60 to the small and struggling developer EA. The game is of course FIFA 23 and I won't talk any more about it here other than to say everyone has their guilty pleasures. Now back to the review at hand. Everybody's Golf is the third review in this backlog playlist series. Take a look at my playlist video if you want to see what other games are coming up and check out the channel for previous reviews of Escape Academy and Far Cry New Dawn. Everybody's Golf is developed by Claphands and was released in 2017 on the PlayStation 4. It is another instalment in the long-running franchise, previously known as Hot Shots Golf up across the pond. It's a very arcadey golf game with limited depth to the gameplay and a very shallow offering in terms of courses. Effectively, it's a golf game for those that don't particularly like golf games. I played for around 12 hours and unfortunately ended up retiring the game before seeing the credits, if there are any. The initial few hours are exciting and the base mechanics of the game are sufficient to have a good time, though with painfully slow course progression and little change up in tournament play, it became a chore that did nothing to bring me back after a while. To caveat, I only played offline, so I didn't have any experience with the online gameplay, which may have been an extra level of fun. Though with the servers either offline already or being taken down soon, I didn't think it was worth reviewing the online offering, as you won't be able to play it anyway. It wasn't all bad though, so let's dive a little deeper. So, I always start with the story. I say always, uh, this is my third review, but you get the idea. Being a golf game, there isn't much to speak of. There is a premise that you're working your way up the ranks and taking on various opponents along the way, which each have a little background and character, though really nothing of substance, and after the first couple I didn't really bother reading their bios. The setup is perfectly suitable for a game of this type though, and I don't think it needs anything more. This is a game all about the gameplay. So how was the gameplay? The base mechanics of the game are solid, and they opt for the simplified option of button pressings for the three points of the swing, rather than the more sim style of using the analog stick. This is of course a very arcade style game as evidenced from the cover, so don't come in here expecting physics similar to Tiger Woods or the golf club games. As you would expect, there are effects on the ball from lie, wind, elevation, etc that make you think about your shots and adjust accordingly. There are also power boosts and super spin shots that you unlock through your progression. The power boosts have limited uses per round, though allow you to shave some shots on some of the trickier holes if executed properly. Using these tactically can really improve a score and always adds a bit of pressure to perform when you activate one. This all feels very nice and hitting that perfect shot or sinking a long putt is always satisfying. On that note, I love how the tingle sound of the ball dropping in the hole comes through the controller. It's such a nice touch and one that never got old, and it may be my single favourite thing about this game. <laughs> they decided to go for a system where each club gets levelled up individually, for some reason unfathomable to me. With this system, each individual club, for example a driver, 7-iron, pitching wedge, etc, will only, will only get upgraded when you use it. This sounds good in principle, a reward for using a certain club and upgrades aligned with your style of play. However, what you'll find after a while is that you only have about four or five clubs you can actually use, as the ones you've upgraded have closed the gap with the ones you haven't. So the idea of having 13 different distances you can hit the ball evaporates, and it ends up as a round of battle golf every time. This is exacerbated as you'll only be playing the one course for ages therefore using a very similar group of clubs. To make matters worse, you only upgrade your accuracy by hitting the green, which doesn't happen often with a driver. So your driving never gets very accurate. You could hit both button inputs perfectly, and one time it would go straight, the next would veer 30 yards to the left and be swimming with the fishes. Because of this I lost the confidence to go for the Hail Mary shots you would expect to start making further into the game. I mean, I still went for them, I just wasn't confident in pulling them off, and rarely did. Speaking of courses, there are no way near enough of them. 
five in the base version of the game, and the unlock of new courses is so painfully slow. For example, I was restricted to playing on the first course only for my first four hours with the game. Four hours. And by the time I retired the game after around 12 hours, I only had access to four courses. This is ridiculous. I found it so tedious playing the same courses over and over again, no matter how nice they looked. PGA Tour 2K21, the last golf game I played, had 39 base courses, all available to play immediately. Obviously this is a different style of golf game, but 5? Five, 5 is a joke. And why can't I play them all immediately? The courses themselves are well designed, and offer plenty of decisions on how to play each hole. Though if I was to nitpick, which as you can tell I am a lot, I'd say why not be more creative? It's clearly a very arcade focused game, why not make the most of that and go a bit crazier? Huge drops, hitting across floating islands, playing around dinosaurs, in space. Why limit it to traditional course design? It seems like a huge missed opportunity to me. To unlock courses, you play through the single player campaign and challenge characters to one-on-one -on -one matches as you unlock them. Again, I feel there's just a huge missed opportunity here. The whole single player campaign just feels very bare bones. Why not have a league table across the tournament so you can develop rivalries and have some further depth to each tournament? Or have more extreme variations on game types with battle golf or team rules? The rivals you face are all on teams. Why not have your own team where you can recruit players and have tournaments, Ryder Cup style? I think this would be great and add a whole new level to the game. Right, now that rant's over, some more things I did like about the game include the side activities. You have a hub world you can run around in, where after you've unlocked them you can go fishing or race around in a golf court, all very good fun. The fishing game is very simple, though quite addictive as they often are, and there's a impressively long list of fish to catch. A nice touch is that you can freely roam around the golf courses, either on foot or in a buggy, as well as go fishing should you wish. I didn't find myself doing this much, though I imagine a lot of people would appreciate the option. I also think a strong selling point for many people would be the customization, which is varied and plentiful. You can design your character and unlock the outfits of the golfers you beat throughout the story, which is another incentive to progress through that character progression. There's also an in-game shop with clothing and accessories you can buy. As you can see your player at all times, it's nice to be able to change up how they look every once in a while, as well as giving them a crazy golf swing. Graphically, the game is nice. Uh, nothing spectacular, but pleasing to look at, and the style is befitting of the genre and arcade nature of the game. There's a bright, happy colour palette and cartoony avatars that instantly brighten your mood and make you feel nice and relaxed. The textures could be improved. Uh, for example, even in the deep, rough areas, the grass is still just a flat 2D texture. Um, though being as I wouldn't class this as a AAA game, it is understandable. Importantly, the gameplay is smooth. Essential when timing button inputs is crucial to playing well and I didn't experience any glitches or crashes during my roughly 12 hours of the game. In terms of sound, the music is fun, and I found myself bopping along on many occasions. The courses each have their own mini soundtracks to suit the vibe of the course, steel pans for the beach course, and rock music for the desert, for example. It's not a soundtrack I would listen to away from the game, but it's certainly a great addition in-game. There isn't any voice acting, which is a shame, as there is a fair bit of dialogue between characters, especially early in the game. It would certainly have been a nice addition, and would probably have made your matchups through the campaign a bit more impactful. Um, with a long-running franchise like this, I'm not sure why it was omitted, but oh well, it's not a game-breaker. I've obviously come down pretty hard on some aspects of this game, and retired it before completing the main story, though I think it's quite acceptable to do that in this case as there's no real story to speak of, it's just unlocking more courses effectively. Despite this, there are lots of good aspects to the game as well, including, and maybe most importantly, the core gameplay. It's just lacking depth across the board. My rating system is a buy, play it if it's free, 
or a void? I'm quite torn on this one and I'm going to cop out by giving two answers. If you like golf games and play ones like Tiger Woods or the Golf Club, I would say avoid. There isn't enough depth and in my opinion there are better arcade golf games such as Power Star Golf, which is free to play by the way, or Golf With Your Friends, which is crazy golf but is incredible fun with a huge variety of courses. Oh, and the servers are still up. If you aren't really a golf game player but want to check out the genre, then again I'd recommend the two I just mentioned, though it is also probably a good place to start here as you don't necessarily need the depth that I think is lacking, and the gameplay is good. Though with the multiplayer being taken offline, I would say only play if you can get hold of it for free because you're only going to be getting half of the features. Thank you for watching. If any of you have played this game, I would be very interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Please drop a like and hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed the video. Now on to the next one!